I quit. This video, um, this vlog, this chit chat, this coffee talk, probably gonna be more of a coffee talk because I need to do some laundry. I need to catch you guys up on some things and I just made my beautiful at home cappuccino. I'm gonna spill it I think. Without, so without further ado. I need to catch you guys up on some things and I am just kind of doing like a little chill type of day here. I'm gonna apologize now if the sun washes me out. This is kind of like the best place for me to sit. We're gonna do some life updates. We're gonna do a little bit of a q and I did ask some of you guys over on Instagram if you had any questions for me and there was kind of an overwhelming response of people just kind of interested in things which is really cool but also super intimidating sorry i'm trying to like get some like music on for myself in the background here for anybody who doesn't know me outside of youtube or instagram or however you know me i am a personal trainer and that's something i've been doing on and off for six years now I've always done in-person training. I've always worked with a company or a facility. I recently quit the gym that I was training at and it's really bittersweet because I did like the facility that I was in. It's just with COVID, I feel like personal training itself still hasn't really bounced back completely. And I've never truthfully made a livable wage working in person as a personal trainer. And that's something that I know a lot of personal trainers struggle with is getting people to pay to come and see you in person. The amount of money that they would actually need to be spending outside of like the percentage commission base that you make to actually be considered a livable wage is insane. Because nine times out of 10, if you're going to see a personal trainer, unless they own or rent out their facility, chances are they're only seeing 35% to 50% of what you're paying them. So if you're paying $400 a month to see a trainer, for you it's a gigantic expense, but on the high end, if they're getting 50% of that, they're only getting $200. And the amount of you know people you would need to train consistently at that you know threshold is is kind of a lot and then whenever somebody falls off or stops coming or goes out of state for the seasons like it significantly impacts your own bottom line and I just can't do that anymore I mean I'm 26 years old I need more consistency with that. I was working three jobs practically this whole summer from March to just now, which is November. And I didn't have a day off. So Friday was like my first full day off in over 33 days. And that's a lot. Today is Sunday. I have had three days off and I'm at the point where I'm itching to work because I'm not used to what this feels like. I'm not used to being bored. I'm not used to not having the anxiety of needing to be somewhere. One of my three jobs is urgent care, receptionist, check-in kind of deal. 
at an orthopedic clinic and I am going to be going back to that full time. It is an afternoon shift so that, excuse me, so that allows me to kind of have my mornings to myself, to cook, to clean, to work out. So another life update is I'm leaving personal training and moving into lifestyle coaching. I have been thinking about it for a couple years now. Wow, I'm really washed out. I'm so sorry, you guys. But I have been thinking about it for quite a few years now. As much as I love personal training and I love, you know, structuring people's workouts and putting them through workouts and, you know, being that support system and the accountability system, I feel very restricted. So that's going to be a little bit more beneficial for me, but it's also going to be way more beneficial for a lot of my clients. You're not restricted to going to the gym on my schedule, making, you know, meals based on when I'm available or anything like that. I will be linking my Instagram and everything down below as well as um, my TikTok. And then as I get this kind of going and unfolding, you guys will have resources to that as well and you can you'll learn how to get a hold of me and i gotta get all of it ironed out still is that better a oh, little bit sorry i can't get the lighting right anyway excuse that thought i am kind of speaking this out there a little bit prematurely i am still in the phase of figuring out all of the legalities and how to do a website and taxes and all that kind of stuff but if you are interested you can go ahead and reach out to me and I can put you on my waiting list my goal is to be completely launching in January and starting to take on clients then like I said very premature but I'm very excited and aside from that I'm pretty sure that's kind of like most of the major life updates I have been kind of dealing with a bit of depression that was happening prior to making these big changes in my life but I mean when you're working that much to still only make like less than $25,000 a year I think depression is kind of bound to happen I kind of felt like a cat chasing my own tail and you know I wasn't making room for eating well or exercising or sleep oh my gosh the if anybody saw the amount of sleep that I've been getting in the last six months you'd cry to me, it's like, no, duh, I was depressed. But, you know, when you're in the middle of a depression, it just kind of feels hopeless. You don't necessarily want to sit there and think about, like, where it's coming from or how to change it. Because a lot of times your depression, your depression is like a toxic ex. They, like, just want to keep making you come back to keep hurting you. And that's kind of what depression feels like. Excuse me. Say hello to the vlog. Hi, vlog. Hi vlog. Alright, I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. Yeah, just text me whenever text me. Yeah, just text me whenever you're leaving. Okay. And heading over there, okay? Yep. Alrighty. I love you. Bye vlog. Okay, bye vlog. Bye vlog. Bye vlog. Bye, vlog. <laughs> bye. I think I was giving kind of a life update. Laundry's done, thank god. Yeah, I kinda think that's it as far as like life updates go. Dogs are doing good, if you can see little miss. Nana under here, and there's Jade behind me. If you didn't know, I have two dogs, Anna and Jade. Anna is a blue healer, Australian Shepherd mix, and then Jade is a husky lab mix. You can see her little nose over here. Uh, Jade is two years old, and Anna is eight years old. Uh, Anna is from my previous marriage. He and I had three dogs together. He took the other two, and I got to keep her, and she is... Anna's a good girl. But aside from all of that, life has been pretty okay. I took a minute away from YouTube and recording and everything like that because I was getting very overwhelmed. I felt incredibly chaotic um, and I just didn't feel like that was going to be me showing up as my best self. Things have been a lot better. I am going to be doing a how I get out of a rut video probably next is going to be my goal. But... A big part of it has definitely been taking things off of my plate. So I feel like if you're somebody who's really struggling with depression and it's because of hustling. I don't mean clinical depression like you have, you know, a chemical or hormone imbalance. I mean depression from just life, just life being too much, life weighing on you. If you're struggling with that, 
take things off your plate. Do not try to meet other people's expectations of you. Try to just meet your own expectations of yourself and do everything that you can, but do not try to do everything. I feel like that's something that I really struggle with is feeling like I'm the only person who can do anything that needs to be done. Like my boyfriend has opposable thumbs. He can do dishes if looking at the dishes gives giving me a panic attack. Yeah, so look out for that. I think it's gonna be really helpful to a lot of people, especially a lot of people who are kind of just feeling like hustle culture and the grind is really stressing them out and weighing on them. And now we're gonna move into the Q&A portion. So I need to get my phone. First question. How long have you and James been together? James and I have been together now for, for about two and a half years. Actually, yeah, just under two and a half years. We started dating May of 2020, right, you know, with COVID. Quite a little bit. What are some of your tips for meal prepping? Time, money, etc. Meal prepping to me is probably like one of the most difficult things about a health and wellness journey because meal prepping for everybody looks so differently and like what they visualize as meal prepping and what actually works for them is different. For me personally, I do not do the standard meal prep where I just eat the same meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Um, I find more pleasure from just prepping the foods I'm going to be using for the week. So pre-washing and cutting up like my, my strawberries for any smoothies or shakes or parfaits that I'm doing or to getting a rotisserie chicken and shredding it and putting it into containers to just easily grab from. I use things like boxed mashed potatoes, boxed rice, boxed quinoa because to me if it's down between me needing something quick out of a box like rice versus going and getting McDonald's because the idea of going home and cooking rice for an hour is overwhelming, I'm definitely going to go with that more box option. There's preservatives and things like that that aren't necessarily the best for you, but nutritionally they're close. And if it, you know, is more supportive for me and my goals. I do make a meal plan, meals that sound good, and then I kind of weigh their cost versus nutritional balance. So if I feel like my grocery bill is going to be $300, I'm going to look at it and, and figure out what meals, where most of that money is coming from and what I can kind of swap out to make it a little bit less expensive for myself because we live in on a budget here and groceries are super expensive right now. Don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. There's a lot of meals that, you know, use the same ingredients. And that's one way that I love to meal prep. Like, I know I love avocado toast and I love putting avocados in my salad and I absolutely love to put avocado in a bowl. So there you go, avocados. And I can use them for multiple meals throughout the day or throughout the week. That way things are staying interesting, but I can use the same produce throughout the week. But I will link below an example meal sheet would look like something that I would do for myself throughout the week if you would need a little bit of inspiration and to see how you can take meals and split them up throughout the week that way you're not just doing chicken broccoli rice every day for lunch. I'm only going to answer like two more questions because I feel like this video is going to get pretty long. Ooh, this is a good one. What part of your fitness journey have you found to be the hardest? That is such a good question and I don't actually really have an answer for it. I feel like the hardest part of my fitness journey or the thing that I found to be the hardest when it came to fitness was just being consistent and I feel like oh, this is what a lot of people struggle with. Consistency is so crucial to being successful when it comes to your fitness journey. Consistency is so important to any any routine and any goal that you're creating is social media it's being consistent fitness it's being consistent taking care of your mental health it's being consistent definitely found when you're in full control or when you're in total autonomy of your life like if you're an entrepreneur it is 10 times harder to be consistent if you're a college student and you have different class times all throughout the day super hard to be consistent picking a time whether you have to wake up early for it or staying up later that you never have anything going on, ever. So if you're somebody that usually sleeps in until nine o'clock in the morning before you have to go to class or you don't have to be at work until you know 11 o'clock, make 7 a.m. the time that you wake up. It's an hour you've never had anything scheduled before because you've been sleeping and take that 
you know, time from the night and just go to bed an hour earlier. But it's a time that you never have anything scheduled and take that time out for yourself. But you want to find an hour of your standard routine that you have already that you don't ever do anything and, you know, try to work that into your routine or the goals that you're trying to set for yourself. If you need any more tips or want any more tips on you know, how to start implementing a workout routine or fitness routine, you go ahead and leave those questions down below and I'll be responding to them. Do you think personal trainers or coaches are worth it? 100%. And I'm not just saying that because I am one. I'm saying that because I've also had one. When I was powerlifting, I had a coach for about two years while I was doing that. And there is something about accountability to somebody else to actually like, encourage you to keep going and keep training even when you're having a bad day. I definitely think having a coach or a trainer is worth it. I know that it is kind of a luxury experience for a lot of people. I know for a fact I couldn't afford a coach now. I could then because I was married and we had you know, double income but I for a fact know that I couldn't afford it so I can understand you know, where other people might be in their own financial positioning. But there are so many free resources online or inexpensive resources online. One of my favorite YouTubers, her name is Sophie and or Gains by Brains. She has a ton of amazing resources and guides online that I've even used myself. Like she has a level up guide and then I know she just launched the Busy Girls guide and she is an incredible incredible person. I love her dearly. I've watched her for years. She has definitely helped me stay motivated and given me that little bit of push when I've needed it. I also think that I'm a great resource and a great trainer. Um, I really love to help and encourage and help keep people accountable. I don't necessarily believe in discipline when it comes to fitness because discipline to me kind of implies that there's some form of punishment to not doing something and that's not the platform I stand on. I believe in just positive vibes and positive support when it comes to your goals. I don't think, you know, if you eat a cookie that you should have to go run a mile. But yes, I definitely believe that there are so many resources out there that are free for people to use. Um, I hope to be one of those for a lot of people. Whether it's even just like watching these videos to get a little pep talk or whether it's I develop my own guide one day that's, you know, a good resource for people. But if this was your first time seeing my face, please give me a like and subscribe down at the bottom. I have uploaded a couple other videos, uh, two leg day routines that you are more than welcome to use. And if you head on over there after watching this video, please go ahead and give it a like and a heart emoji in the comment section so I know that you got there from this one. And look out for any future videos that I post. Like I said, my next one's definitely going to be how to get out of a rut, things I'm doing to help my depression. And yeah, I hope that you found this video helpful and motivating and inspiring. And yeah, just look out for the coaching stuff to come later. All right, go ahead and check out my socials below. And I will see you soon.